Working with Robin, you always feel afterwards, there, there are a number of directors that I adore, but you always feel um, that there, it, there, is, there has never been and there never will be a rehearsal hall, and I certainly include my own when I'm directing, as exciting as Robin's. And no one has ever been able to figure out how he does it. I have a, a, a Robin story that, that seems to me in a funny way to exemplify what it was he, he did, although you can't really describe um, what it was that, that he did. I say did only in the sense mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. uh, my work with him pretty well was contained between um, 1974 or 5, at when it was when he arrived, and 1980. And I've worked with him since then, but those were the Stratford years. Um, and the, the rehearsals were uh, terrifying and exciting and funny and devastating and humiliating and shocking and uh, whimsical and any adjective you can possibly describe. By the force of his personality or? By the force of his personality, by the force of his talent, by the force of the games that he brought in to play in which you were sometimes subtly, sometimes not so subtly pitted against each other. Um, the, the ways in which he conjured you to live up to the text, the ways in which he, he enabled you to take the text and whirl it around you and find something that no one had ever found before or that you at least could believe that no one had ever found before. Um, he was, he is limitless in his gifts, in his um, uh, tools. You mean tools and gifts in his approach to an actor yes. and what an actor is trying to do inside? Yeah, and to his approach to a play and what the play itself is trying to do inside and the way the actors meet that play and the way um, things change in that meeting. He, would, he was the most prepared, well, Michael was also extremely prepared, but Robin was, was, by the time I worked with Robin, I was canny enough to finally be able to see this. I couldn't see it with Michael because I, I never thought in that way. But by the time I began to work with Robin, I had worked with enough directors by then so I could see that this was a director of astonishing um, um, he brought astonishing things to the table. And I finally asked if I could be his assistant director on Cymbeline when he directed it at, at Stratford. Uh, he said that I could be the assistant to the director, but not the assistant director. So I was the assistant to the director. And he met with me back in, oh, it must have been December, uh, December or January, possibly, before we started rehearsals in April, I believe, March or April. And he was incredibly generous. He brought all his sketchbooks, all his journals, and they were immense. He had not only designed all the costumes, although he had a costume designer, so it wasn't that his costumes would be the ones that would be made, but he designed all the costumes anyway. He designed all the wigs, he designed whatever we were doing on the festival stage, he had designed all the sets, he had done something that looked like a storyboard for a film in which he had sketched, and he's a, he's a beautiful and very delicate and subtle artist. He had sketched every single scene, and sometimes in, in parts, um, that were to be done in Cymbeline and showed many of them to me, probably not all, but showed many of them to me. One was, I remember, of a boat on water, which was eventually cut because um, they didn't have, Stratford didn't have the budget to have water in a boat. And another one that I remembered was uh, Colm Fior, who played Yachimo, coming through, there was a, a, Robin had drawn a picture of Yachimo coming through the up-center entrance with a, a yellow beach towel over his left shoulder 
and then the next picture, a panel, exactly the way you would do for a film. The next picture was of, of Kaum, Yakimo, lying downstage right on this, face down on this yellow beach towel. And, uh, and he, he, he talked, he shared with me all these scenes, and I, I found this astonishing that he would be so... Mm. giving and, and generous about this. And he was asking for your input no, or no, just this no, is where this I am? Is, yes, he, because I had asked to be his assistant right. then, uh, he was sharing with me what, where he had gotten to that point. And how much of the production then expressed what he had imagined up to that well, point? Well, as I say, the boat and the water left. But it wasn't until we were in a, a tech, it must have been a tech dress rehearsal in the uh, theater. We had, I'd been in rehearsals, of course, I'd seen all these scenes rehearsed in the rehearsal hall. But there must have been something about it being in the theater because we were sitting back further. Suddenly I saw Calm Fior walk in up center with a yellow beach towel over his left shoulder, and I saw him walk down stage right, put the yellow beach towel down, and lie down face down on it. And so, this image came back to me of this sketchbook that Robin had shown me back in December or January. And I realized that in all the times I had sat in on rehearsals of that scene, I had never once heard Robin say, and now calm, you will come in up center with a beach towel over your left shoulder and you will put it down there and lie down upon it. He'd never said that. So how did it happen? So how did it happen? Okay. Well. And that's the way he directs. How does it happen? Nobody knows. So what you're referring to is not someone who predetermines the machine and then everyone fits in the machine. Someone who has a broad and comprehensive vision that is so animate in a way that all the rowers end up taking their place at an appropriate part of the boat. Yes, exactly. Exactly that. I think that's a very good image. And Everybody's in that boat and they're all rowing together, all going toward the same place. And I must yeah. say, in 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 the productions that I'm most struck by his work, that's the sense, mm -hmm. that there is a unity to it mm -hmm. that is uncanny. Mm -hmm. You know, not like I crack the whip and you obey me, no, but something arrived in a unity that takes your breath away. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's I always remember, I uh, th thought as an actor, how did that happen? How did that happen, yeah. It's as if the power of his imagination and his, and his mind and his heart are so strong and so unified with his, I would say, will, but that sounds as if he's pushing it towards something, and he never does. He never pushes. He, it's as though he takes away, like the way that they describe Michelangelo and the, and mm. the carving, that he takes away anything that is extraneous. And what is left is this vision that he had painted back a year before. And that's what you see. 